Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. The SpaceX Dragon cargo capsule was recently detached from the International Space Station for its return to Earth just over a month after delivering about 5,000 pounds of supplies and experiments to the ISS. Dragon safely returned to Earth with more than 3,200 pounds of NASA cargo and science samples, completing the company's fourth resupply mission to the station. A destination station form on October 27th at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center near Marshall Space Flight Center featured a series of live interactive panel discussions about some of the cutting-edge technologies being tested on the space station. Research performed on the ISS provides benefits to life on Earth and prepares NASA to send humans farther into the solar system than ever before. NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden visited Marshall during the week of October 27th. While there, he toured Marshall's Payload Operations Integration Center, which oversees science experiments on the station. Station, this is uh, Payload Ops Center Charlie Bolden for a voice check. How do you read? The administrator put in a long-distance call to NASA's Butch Wilmore and Reed Wiseman to discuss recent activities on the orbiting laboratory and the crew's busy schedule. Bolden also attended the 7th Annual Werner von Braun Memorial Symposium with other NASA leaders and commented on the work conducted on the space station in support of our journey to Mars and the progress in developing technologies and systems needed to get us there. Orbital Scientists is conducting an investigation into what went wrong shortly after liftoff of its Antares rocket on October 28th at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. And Terry's was carrying the Cygnus cargo craft to orbit for its resupply flight to the space station. No injuries were reported, and the crew on board ISS is fine. There are enough supplies to sustain the crew well into next year. Despite the accident, NASA remains committed to expanding the capability of launching cargo and crew from American shores to the International Space Station. After a three-month stay at the station, the Russian Progress 56 cargo ship left on October 27th, loaded with trash and unwanted items. That made room for the Progress 57, which launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on October 29th, docking later the same day with almost three tons of food and materials. NASA astronaut Terry Virts participated in final qualification training October 30th and 31st in Star City, Russia with Expedition 4243 crewmates Anton Shkoplerov of the Russian Federal Space Agency and European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Kristoforetti. They are the next crew headed to the ISS. Launch is scheduled for November 23rd Eastern Time. Testing of a 35-inch long Space Launch System Booster Separation Model in Langley Research Center's Unitary Plan Wind Tunnel is helping NASA engineers better understand the aerodynamic forces the real SLS rocket will encounter as it flies through the atmosphere. The wind tunnel produces air speeds over 2,400 miles per hour. The SLS will be the world's most powerful rocket capable of launching astronauts aboard the Orion spacecraft to deep space destinations. A naturally occurring trick on Jupiter produced a celestial treat of an image, befitting Halloween. The photo taken by the Hubble Space Telescope appears to show Jupiter staring back at Hubble like a one-eyed giant cyclops. However, the dark spot inside the planet's great red spot storm isn't a pupil, but a shadow that was cast by Jupiter's moon Ganymede as it orbited the planet. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov/twan.